Hey everyone, welcome back to Crypto Cash. Thank you so much for joining me here. Hope you're having a fantastic day. Now look at Dogecoin, seeing what's going on. Uh, we can see we've actually honored this ascending trend line here still. So even though we saw a pullback aligned with Bitcoin, strong, strong hold here at this 0 0.65, 0 0.618 golden pocket FIB level. So these are very, very good signs in the overall sense. However, it doesn't mean we just blindly just take longs here. We saw, a, you know, this is a weekend behavior. However, you take a look at the volume, it was contrary to weekend behavior. In other words, Dogecoin absorbed a lot of market capitalization from Bitcoin dominance pulling back, and it still is pulling back now. So I think that does imply we're going to probably see some further upside here from Dogecoin. But the key takeaway here is that we are performing as expected in this current trend here. We got to kind of respect the fact that it's probably going to continue. Uh, but once more, we don't want to get blindly bullish. So let's go ahead and take a look at some information on the back end, some liquidation data, see what's going on. And if you can, please just hit the like button, comment below if you get a chance. But at the very least, hit the like button on every single video, just so we can help get this in front of more people. Because unfortunately, YouTube does a bad job of uh, recommending my content just based on how you know short and sweet that it is, right? I'm not saying I'm sweet. I'm just saying in general, that's a term of, uh, you know, Whatever you want to call it, forget that. Anyways, let's take a look here at the daily time frame. Sorry, this is the last seven days on the left. Whoa, what, one month on the right, right? This is liquidation data. We can see here there's a lot of longs, more longs than shorts. So it does imply we could very well see a wick down to this 10.2 uh, mark. We just got to be mindful that that's a possibility. Now, if we look at the macro, we can recognize that there is more liquidation on the upside than the downside. 11 cents, 11.1, pretty heavy amount there. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, high volume, uh, bars here, if you will. And what that would basically just tell us is that we have somewhere in the range of one to two billion in liquidation above the price action upwards of about 11.5. So that is a lot heavier than just this half a billion down below at 10.3. So just keep that in mind. We're kind of in the middle. That's essentially established range bound activity. And in the, when you're in a range, you have a tendency of breaking out pretty hard in either direction. But we've been deriving from the downside and in turn more likely to continue to the upside. In other words, if you've ever seen like flag patterns or pendant patterns, they all come from the downside of the upside and break upwards. Inverse applies to the downside too. They break down if they start from the top. Okay, so again, that's just a pattern, very loose example, but just still something to be mindful of nonetheless. You'll notice that I try to I try to my best educate in every single video because I think it's fair for people to try to uh, have a better chance at surviving these markets. If you're listening to people that are making you know 50, 100, even 20x leverage trades. And they are, um, you know, bragging about how how surgical they were at the top or the bottom. That's all well and good. Don't get wrong, but they are probably not sharing with you how many times they've they've taken a loss. Uh, again, I share all my stuff. It's available in our Discord in uh, what trade results here, um, premium stats rather. So it's all here available for you. But uh, I do want to celebrate one thing. Great, great call here on your protocol. We got it at 450. Took profits upwards about 520 for 48 percent over the weekend. So again, I'm not shooting like you know. 100% by any stretch. I think we're only like 75% this month. But the truth is, um, you know, being patient, you can find better opportunities by just waiting for the right opportunities. You're going to miss a ton, by the way, just so you know, it's nothing abnormal. Uh, okay, anyways, take a look here at the daily. Let's recognize this. We're above the 20 in the 50 day SMA. That's extremely important. Talked about that yesterday and the day before being an, an extremely relevant scenario. In other words, relevant in the sense is this 0.5 FIB level at 10.2 just above this local liquidation level is essentially that support level, okay? So it doesn't mean the price can't come down that low. It just implies if it does, we're probably going to see some support, okay? In fact, it probably actually has more incentive to come down that low first before it goes up again because of the liquidation that's down there. It works as a magnet. It's a really funny thing. Uh, but again, market makers are uh, exactly that. They make the market however they want, and it gets kind of out of control. Um, Anyways, I talk about that in other videos. I'm not going to go into too much detail right now, but uh, whales will manipulate the market however they see fit. And oftentimes when they sweep a liquidation level, it's just to ensure they have no opposition and they can turn the price or move it wherever they want. That's essentially what we're potentially going to see, but we haven't seen that yet. We see it with Bitcoin a lot. We saw a wick up to 65K roughly last night or 64.7. Anyways, watch my Bitcoin video if you're curious about that. For Dogecoin, we are still in good shape here. Even though we're seeing a second stochastic swing to the downside, probably going to see a little bit further downside. We can see money flow index is still fairly high, even though it's tapering off. We're over 50 in the RSI, generally construed as a positive sign. And we are um, in pretty good strength here with the trend, as well as MACD still, even though it's slightly diverging, it's still 
we've got momentum, okay? Those are all good things. Um, and if we see here, we can recognize the 100-day SMA is kind of coming down. That could be an initial rejection spot for us. So I think 11 cents, uh, again, big surprise. We got some liquidation here at that 11 cent mark. We're gonna probably see some resistance there. So we could very well see some range bound activity here between you know this 0.618 Fib level and the 11 cent range before it legs up again. But as long as we're honoring this ascending trend line for the moment, we're in pretty good shape. Okay. And I like to emphasize for the moment, because even though we could very well break down below it, it's not a problem if it does happen. We just got to be mindful that it occurred, right? It does not imply you just open a short and the price goes all the way down to zero. That's not how it works. But for the most part, um, you can break bearish by doing that. But that's just a beginning sign we want to look for. Then that, that's going to come later, by the way. See here, we got trend strength index pulling back. This makes sense, but I actually like to see the TSI low with the price action establishing higher lows. That's very, very good. Same thing with MACD and stochastic and RSI, right? So these are all very, very good signs for the most part, minus the fact that we're kind of maintaining 50 in the RSI. I don't like it when the price gets this close. So there is potential for the price to pull back. In fact, we are seeing Bitcoin starting to make its descent here. Um, I don't think this is, you know, grounds for... Uh, closing your long per se, depending on the trade you're in. But generally speaking, we're seeing a very similar rejection here from Dogecoin. But the key takeaway here is that we just lost a 20 day SMA on the four hour. Um, and again, keep in mind, you can jump above and below. This candlestick hasn't closed yet. We got three and a half hours left. But the truth is when we, if you close below the 20 day SMA, generally that's construed as you know unfavorable and that you could be seeing the price continue lower. Because technically here, you can see, even though we are establishing higher lows, we're establishing lower highs too, right? And that's not necessarily a great thing. That just implies we're gonna see a break to the upside or the downside soon. And I know, I know, I know, roll your eyes. It's frustrating to hear some people say, the price could go either way. That's literally how it is at all times. But uh, statistically, we're more probable to go up than down in the overall sense. However, the four hour time frame is giving us some signs here that we wanna be mindful the price could continue lower. And the hourly is probably gonna say the same thing with our cloud here. We are above and below the cloud, this is what range bound activity does, kind of gives you some false positives. So when you see these kind of things here, right, you got a mostly bullish macro, uh, slightly bearish four hour time frame, a transitionary time frame, and the hourly is like, I don't know what the hell's going on. This generally signs for not taking a trade. You don't force a trade because of it. I don't know, like, I like to make decisions that have a little bit more odds of success. And that's, it follows through to my personal life too. Like when I do things in my real life, I like to make sure, <laughs> as I say my real life, you get what I'm saying. When you do things naturally every day, you know, if, if you make a decision, you want to know it's a good decision, okay? If you're taking a trade right now with Dogecoin, it's not necessarily the best decision to take a long or short right now. And that's just because we're in a transition right now. Bitcoin could break bearish, but it hasn't yet. Dogecoin's kind of following suit. We look at this combination and how the price action is responding. Bitcoin's been range bound. Uh, but Dogecoin has established, established a higher high th than Bitcoin. That's a good sign, but it's also pulling back a lot harder too. So me, I don't know. I'd much rather wait for a breakout. And the kind of breakout I'm looking for personally is a sweep of that 11, 11 cent range, okay? I think that would be a good, good consideration for a long there because we've been breaking above some key level resistances, specifically the 100 day SMA and putting ourselves in a better position to stay in line with this ascending trend. Either way you look at it, the overall trend is still up. We're still looking good. I just don't see a lot of reasons to, to take a long or a short at this exact moment. Uh, that's just me personally. What are your thoughts? Love to hear it. Comment below. Don't forget to hit the like button on every single video you watch. Join our sponsors or check them out. Link down below. They're both fantastic and I deeply appreciate uh, all of your support. Hope you all have a good rest of your day though. Either way, thanks again for your time. See you tomorrow.